Hello, welcome to another exterior video where I work on my truck. Sometimes I'm successful, sometimes I'm not. But on today's video, I'm not working on my truck. I'm out enjoying the nature and actually I'm gonna do a remote interview. I don't know how this is gonna come out, but stick around guys. I think it's gonna be fun. And today with me I have a very good friend of mine, Inik. He has an Instagram account and YouTube page, so you be sure to follow him. I'm gonna leave all the links in the description. So everybody say hello to Inik and his amazing one-of-a-kind Xterra. Hi, I'm Inik from Mo Leisure X Ventures and we're gonna do a quick walk around of Yogi, our 2009 Nissan Xterra. So Inek is a pretty much full-time traveler and explorer with his partner and a dog. So I don't know even where you are right now, but I'm sure somewhere pretty nice. So if you'd like to share where you're located right now and where you're headed, feel free to do so. Where am I now? I'm lost in the desert. If you can come find me, that would help. I'm just joking. So we've been hanging out at Golden Butte National Monument for the last couple weeks. Uh, just kind of hanging out in the desert, enjoying the slightly better weather than uh, the rest of the country and the uh, freezing, freezing temperatures have been experiencing. And then uh, we'll be heading up to southern Utah in the next week to start our Rogue Overland adventure. So first, of course, let's talk about your Xterra. What year and model it is when you bought it? Yogi is a 2009 Nissan Xterra. Uh, I've had him now for almost four years. I picked him up in 2019 in June. So of course let's start with the most obvious feature of your truck that stands out from all the Xterras that I have ever seen is your roof rack. So please tell us about your roof rack and how it's been so far. So just to start us off we're going to start with the, the side profile here. We've got our airflow snorkel. Uh, we have Firestone Destination MT2s riding on Anthem uh, wheels. Uh, all of that is sitting on a All Dogs Off-Road Raid 90 uh, suspension kit. Um, with that, it comes. we have the upper control arm, heavy duty leaf spring uh, in the back, heavy duty spring in the front, uh, and then the Coney Raid 90s for the uh, shocks all the way around. In the rear here, we've got the parabolic leaf pack, which is a heavy duty uh, leaf pack as well. Um, with all that, that's the uh, suspension kit, tires, everything that kind of keeps, keeps us to the ground. Uh, and right now, this is our third style setup with this suspension, and I think this is our favorite so far. So moving up from there, we've got our rock sliders, which are from uh, Hardcore Off-Road LLC out of Pennsylvania. Uh, our protection running from the front all the way down underneath the skid plates are from S-Sphere. The, the front bumper is a Nismo front bumper. On top of Yogi, we've got the rooftop tent from Big Country 4x4. Uh, this is the Penthouse XL. And the reason we went with this tent is because it's an all welded tent here that allowed us to do something special that I'll show you once we get to the inside. On top of the rooftop tent, we have our traction boards from exit tracks they're out of new zealand and then we have a red arc 125 watt solar panel and then around back we've got our we boost and one of my favorite modifications that you can check out on our youtube channel uh, which is the uh, the gas tank uh, just kind of drilled a couple holes in there and figured out a mounting system for it if you want to check that out you can look that up on the uh, youtube account 
Uh, other than that, the rest of the back end is all stock. We haven't changed anything on it. Um, the, uh, the last exterior modification I think that we have done is uh, our Oxito LED lights, which we have done all the way around. So our headlights, turn signals, reverse, every single light that I have for the exterior is now an LED light. So in the front of Yogi, we have our Nismo off-road bumper. Paired with the Nismo front bumper, we have our Asphere skid plates. They're all aluminum skid plate that comes out of Isro. Um, in my opinion, it's one of the best aluminum skid plates out there on the market. They're made out of 5152 aluminum, quarter inch, super strong. Really, really happy with these. Have any issue with it? Any leaks? No, I have no leaks. No leaks. 270,000 miles, no leaks. Have you noticed any body roll with it while you drive? I mean, it adds some certain weight. How much does it weigh? Uh, I do have body roll because I've removed both the front and rear uh, sway bars. Um, only at like high, high speeds because I, I compensated the fact that I removed the sway bars with heavy duty suspension components. So that's, a, limited my roll a little bit, but there still is body roll. I have a rough estimate. Uh, I weighed it a month or two before we started this build, uh, and we were sitting at just under 6,000 pounds. With this build, I'm assuming we're roughly about the same because I had uh, removed so much from the interior. What I added back in, I think is kind of uh, negated the total weight. So I'm imagining I'm probably around 5,900 pounds. How easy does it to deploy and take it down? I think it's very easy to deploy and take down uh, compared to the different setups that we've done throughout the three and a half years we've been on the road. This is by far the easiest and quickest to set up and take down. I would say it takes us less than three minutes for me to set this bad boy up and we're ready to go and start cooking. Let's talk about your suspension. What kind of suspension you have? Because you added more weight on top. Had you do any reinforcement? And any future possible plans for upgrading suspension for anything else? Yeah. Uh, so on the suspension, we have a All Dogs Off-Road suspension kit. And what that entails is the Coney Raid 90 shocks paired with the All Dogs Off-Road heavy duty spring in the front and the All Dogs Off-Road parabolic leaf pack in the rear. Maybe Titan Swap, if not, why not? Titan Swap. Titan Swaps have its place and its time. Um, I think they're really, really cool. It's a super unique thing that us Nissan owners can do. Um, I don't think it's a necessity by any means, but it definitely adds capability to the vehicle in high speed scenarios. Um, so I can definitely see why a lot of people like to do it. For me, I didn't think the, the width add, which is kind of, in my opinion, a negative to it, uh, was worth the compromise I'd have to take on maybe not taking a trail that I wanted to take because I wasn't able to fit down it. Because right now I can pretty much fit down a side-by-side -side trail if needed. Thing I wanted to ask you, are you planning to do any more mods on the truck? What else are you planning to add if it's not a secret? And any future upgrades, any future plans? So a couple of the upgrades that we're thinking about doing in the future are primarily around making our life easier. Uh, there's two major upgrades that I would like to do throughout this year, possibly before we start on the Pan American Highway. Uh, one of them is changing the side canvas to a hard material. Not sure exactly how I'm gonna approach that just yet. I have a few ideas, but uh, that's the first one we wanna do. The second one is we're hoping to work with uh, Max Gear and figure out a rear bumper scenario that's gonna work best for us, like a, a garage storage and like gas and water or tire and garage. I haven't really decided exactly what we're going to do, but uh, something around that on the back so we can have a little bit more exterior storage. Another thing I wanted to ask you, now that you have a roof rack, it adds more weight on top. It's somewhat aerodynamic, but have you noticed any MPGs drop? I know with our trucks, talking about MPGs, there is not even a point about it, but still. So I have, uh, just to kind of give you some context, 
I have a uh, six speed manual. So because of that, I have found that I typically get anywhere between two and three miles per gallon more than the automatics. So right now, even with all the armor and the build out that we have, I'm still getting 15 to 18 miles per gallon, depending on the type of driving I'm doing. Is it safe to say that you see if you camping in your truck all year round and even in the winter, does it stay warm inside the tent? So in the different months of the year, uh, winter, summer, spring, fall, um, obviously we have to deal with different weathers and different climates depending on where we are in the country. Um, so really once this tent is up, like we're inside, but in reality, we're still really exposed to the elements. And what I mean by that is like the cold, the heat, there's no real way for us to be climate controlled because of our soft walls. Um, so because of that aspect, we're basically still, we're living outdoors as far as the, the weather goes. So if it's cold outside, it's cold inside the tent. If it's hot outside, it's hot inside the tent. Uh, until I kind of come up with that hard side wall thing, we're, you know, we're just living in the elements. Can you give us a little bit of a tour over inside of your truck? What kind of mods you have in there? I saw you have some cabinets in there. Are they all self-made? So tell us about a little bit of your inside of your truck. We're gonna show you the inside of Yogi now. Give you a little glimpse on our lifestyle. There's a few steps you gotta do to get on the inside. Probably a little confused, but you'll see in a second. All right, so let's check out the inside. My, uh, my gas struts are a little bit weak right now, so our cameraman's gonna have to hold the back door. All right, so this is the inside. <laughs> so what, what I did in here to make this possible for, for us to actually utilize this space is I cut a hole in the roof here. As you can see, this black trim here is the hole, and this white part is the bed platform that goes up and down with gas struts. So at this point, I'll push up the bed platform. So this is the inside of the Xterra. Um, I've got uh, aluminum extrusion bench on this side with all of our storage. Uh, it's kind of a mess right now. We've been out in the, the wilderness for a bit and I haven't taken the time to organize it. But uh, so this is kind of just a simple box with a, uh, a gas strut assisted top. And then uh, we'll flip you over on the other side and show you the kitchen. All right, so on this side, we've got our 15 inch by 34 inch tall uh, truck refrigerator. It came from a Freightliner. Um, it's very, very large. It's got a freezer and more than enough fridge space for us. I think this, this upped us about, we can stay out in the wilderness about a week longer now with this fridge. Um, so moving on from the fridge, we've got our induction stove. So everything in the vehicle runs off of electricity. We don't have anything um, else plumbed in. We have no gas or anything like that. So we, we uh, went with an induction stove, a Dometic Go faucet, and then just a nice simple sink. And the gray water from the sink runs out onto my tire. The, uh, the structures, as you see here, the floor and everything is made out of the 2020 aluminum extrusion. And that was fun to work with. A little bit tedious, but it was kind of like an adult style erector set, in my opinion. Um, I had a lot of fun with it. So supporting all of the electricity that we have inside of here is a 260 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. So some of the other cool things about the kitchen here is I think my handle choices. Uh, I really like the way they kind of came out. A nice pop simple fold out this is a like a secondary table goes back up and then down on the uh the drawers are nice and easy you just push in the lever those are kind of the traditional overland drawers so those all come out like that same with the bottoms all of our cleaning supplies and then these are pantries as well 
So we've got all the cooking like pots, pans, and for some reason we keep our bread in there. I think just because it fits. Um, and then that's our traditional pantry with all of our canned goods and things like that. All right, so one of the last kind of unique things, I don't even know if it's really unique, but I like it. Um, I'd cut out two uh, little panels in the floor so that way the storage underneath the subfloor was accessible. So that just slides out like that. And then this one over here, it's a little bit easier because it doesn't have the fridge sticking out like it does. But this one just comes straight up, and that gets to some of my toys. I got my my 124 scale RC car, a collection of hats, and um, what are those again? Uh, hammocks. That's what, uh, hammocks. <laughs> we also keep our hiking gear and our climbing gear down underneath there as well. We also added in uh, grip tape. So this is like uh, stairs for stairs, uh, grip tape. So that way Ella doesn't slide around. Cause when we first started traveling with this new setup, uh, Ella could not get her grip on this flooring. Uh, it's just too hard. Her nails don't stick in and she just slides around. So we added this and she's uh, had no issues since. Uh, all right, now that I got my Mountain Dew, I can finish this up. So on the storage section of the subfloor, uh, underneath the uh, the floor that we made here we have on this side is basically all Ella's space it's all her treats and toys and food and all that stuff huh Ella yeah she's 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 searching for food right now like we don't feed you enough um, but yeah so this side is all just storage for her underneath the floor and then around the other side here is where we keep uh, all of the power and and uh, utilities essentially as stuff falls out. Um, uh, very important tape measure, never leave home without it. So on this side, we have a 260 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. To charge the 260 amp hour battery, we have a Renogy uh, MTTP solar controller and DC to DC controller that's built into one unit. I don't remember the name of it right now, but it is a Renogy product. They have a 30 amp and a 50 amp. We decided to go with a 30 amp. Um, we use that to manage all of our charging systems from the engine to the battery and from the solar panel to the battery. From there, we have the power running to a 12, it's all 12 volt. So from there, we're running to a 12 volt uh, little fuse panel that I run to all of my additional power ports. From there, we have the WeBoost, which is directly mounted to the battery. Uh, and then we have a 2000 watt Renogy inverter that runs the induction stove and any AC charging that we may have to do while we're on the road. So I'm gonna give you a little peek on the, uh, the engine, all the good stuff. Oh, fancy. All right, so on the engine here, I've done very, very little. Uh, in all honesty, the only thing that I've done in here is this cold air intake from Volant. And I guess you could consider the airflow snorkel as a uh, performance enhancement thing. But in reality, this is the only performance enhancement that's been added to the vehicle. Uh, besides that, I have also ran all of my power switch system in here for my switch panel. And this runs off of the house battery. Nothing runs off of the, the uh, vehicle battery except for the DC to DC charger. I also wanted to show you our ditch light brackets. Uh, these are my favorite design that I've found so far. This is from Max Gear. Uh, he makes a nice little bracket and then he adds a nice little X in there for Xterra. Uh, and it mounts directly to the hinge point for the hood. So you just remove that nut, place this on and tighten down the nut and you're good to go. So you've been traveling for pretty long time already. Have you had any issues with the truck? What have broke? Have you had to do any field repairs or has anything broke? Have you had any issues? Hopefully not. And I wish that nothing breaks on your truck. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, we, we go off-roading quite a bit, so obviously 
in that type of lifestyle, you are going to break things, wear parts out, you know, it's uh, very rough on the roads. So just to give you an example of the different things that I've had to change, uh, I have done the front rack and pinion. I've done the timing chain because I'm at 260, 270,000 miles. So I've had to do the timing chain. I've done the clutch on it at 180,000 miles. I did the clutch. Uh, and I've done a couple of uh, engine sensors, uh, crankshaft and camshaft sensors, but uh, that's about it. So it's pretty safe to say that you are living the dream. You're traveling the country, you're exploring the parks. How many parks have you been so far? How many are you planning still to visit? And what's your goal for the next year? All right, so how many parks have we visited? We've, we've visited, um, let me see here, let me count real quick. I'm just, I'm just joking. Uh, we've done uh, 52 out of the 63 national parks so far. We have 11 more to do, one left in the lower 48. The rest are outside of the lower 48. So that's Alaska, Hawaii, and America Samoa. We will be going up to Alaska this summer in hopes to complete all seven of their national parks. They do have eight in Alaska, but we have already been to Denali. So also tell us why you picked Xterra, what do you like about it, that you choose it, and what you don't like, what you wish it had, and what you wish it didn't have. Why the Xterra? So I picked the Nissan Xterra because I have always been a Nissan fan. One of my first vehicles that I ever had the, the privilege of driving was a Nissan 720 hardbody, uh, 4x4. You know, I learned how to off-road with that little truck. Um, I'm very accustomed to the way Nissan engineers their vehicles and how their thought process is. So I decided to stick with them when I went with the uh, Overland platform. Uh, I feel like it's a very capable vehicle. It's got all of the benefits of what you would say like a Jeep has. It's got the Dana 44, heavy duty axles and all that stuff. And you have to do very, very minimal modifications to make it a very capable off-roader. I mean, you, pretty much nothing. You could just put 33-inch tires on this thing and you could go to town all day. I don't like that they discontinued the Nissan Xterra. That's about it. So hopefully next year around when you visit uh, New York again, we meet and we get to explore some outdoors together. That would be really cool to see you truck in person. But as of now, thank you so much for joining me on this uh, remote interview. And I wish you all a very safe travels and be safe and just enjoy it. All right, so I think that's kind of our, our walk around for the Nissan Xterra. Good old beautiful Yogi here. I want to thank uh, DIY Auto and Photo for having us on and uh, allowing us to show off Yogi a little bit. If you'd like to follow along with our journey and our trip, uh, check us out on Instagram at Mo Leisure X Ventures. We also have a YouTube page that you can check out, but primarily we're on Instagram. And uh, if you want to ask us any questions, anything at all, don't hesitate to hit us up. We answer every single comment, every question that comes through. Uh, it's very important to us to make sure that uh, we're engaged with the community and that we're there for you guys and we're able to answer anything that we can for you. All right, guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was fun for you to watch and you find something interesting as well. Maybe there are certain moods that you would like to replicate as well. So feel free to leave that in the comments. And I'm actually going to try to make more videos like that as well. When I meet my friends with their builds and we're going to take a look at them. It's always great to exchange ideas. So on this note, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you might find it helpful. And as always, until next time, everybody, bye.